Hello everyone, this is Sean Taylor, Field Application Scientist Manager for BioRad in Canada. And in this segment of the Ultimate QPCR Experiment, I'll be presenting the reference gene problem. So reference genes in labs are often chosen based on historical bias. Many labs use typically always the same one or two reference genes to normalize the data between all of their samples for all of the genes that they work with, for all of the treatments that they work with. And the danger in doing this is that if the reference genes themselves have not been validated to assure that they are stable between samples, they can dramatically change the data. In this example, we have two biological groups. So this would be, uh, for example, test group A and test group B, or this could be control versus treated, if you will, uh, cDNA samples. And if you're working with an unstable reference gene that changes in its own expression between the two groups, then you get a relative quantity that is quite large. So in this case, if I have a delta CQ of five between the control and treatment group for this unstable reference gene, then the relative quantity is two to the power of five, which is a 32-fold difference in, re in reference gene expression between control and treated. Whereas if I'm working with a stable reference gene, ideally the delta CQ between the control and treatment groups would be very low in the best case scenario, presuming that the RNA samples have been assessed to be the same concentration and, there, and therefore the cDNA samples are the same concentration, then a perfect reference gene would give a delta CQ of zero. There'd be literally no change between control and treated. And hence two to the power of that no change of zero is one. So the unstable reference gene is giving us a 32-fold difference between control and treated, and the stable reference gene is giving us a one-fold and essentially no difference between control and treated. If the gene of interest, for example, gives a delta CQ of two between the control and treated sample, which would be a four-fold difference, two to the power of two, then when normalized to the unstable reference gene, four, divided by the 32-fold difference for the unstable reference gene. This is to normalize. We're normalizing by dividing the relative quantity of the gene of interest by the relative quantity of the reference gene would, would be an eight-fold decrease. This would, re, this would result in a normalized expression difference of eight-fold decrease for the gene of interest normalized to the unstable reference gene. Whereas if we use the stable reference gene, Again, we divide four, the relative quantity of the gene of interest, divided by one, which is the relative quantity of, of the stable reference gene, which would result in a fourfold increase in gene expression when normalized to the appropriate reference gene. The point of this exercise is that if a reference gene is affected by treatment, it can dramatically change the result far away from what the actual result is supposed to be when working with a stable reference gene. It's important to use the geometric mean stability of at least two or three reference genes for normalization. And this is per uh, the, the, the initial van de Sample paper that describes this. Now, in order to select a good stable reference gene or set of reference genes, there is a table in the article, Trends in Biotechnology, that describes how to do this. So um, step six of reference gene validation describes how to use a search term in Google Scholar, and the search term is here. So type qPCR reference gene and either GeNorm, NormFinder, or BestKeeper. And these are the three commonly used softwares to assess reference gene stability between samples. Then type the organism and the tissue of interest. 
And that will result in papers that have been published where the authors used either GeneNorm, NormFinder, or BestKeeper to determine the stability of their reference genes for the particular organism and tissue of interest for the project in which you are working. Pick seven to 10 targets from the articles and then validate the primers uh, according to what we saw with primer validation in the primer validation video. A spike in of RNA or DNA uh, into the test samples can help assess reference gene stability as well. So by performing this analysis, ultimately a panel of multiple reference genes should be used as a preliminary experiment to assure that the best two or three reference genes that are the most stable between treatment groups are chosen for any given study. Bottom line, this means that for any given study, a panel of reference genes should always be tested against all of the treatment groups in the experiment. So a selected number of maybe two or three biological replicates from each of the treatment groups or biological groups in the experiment, including control. So a full study cohort of samples is required to do this to assure that the reference genes are stable between all the treatment groups. And then the most stable reference genes can be used confidently to assure that this mistake here is not made where data is published artifactually consequent to the reference gene being regulated between treatments.